Hello guys, welcome to Ankit Sunil with today for your forensic medicine exam. I'll teach you how to do examination and how to write a certification of a rape victim. So let's start. So basically you have to write the letter to the investigating officer with the reference of his letter, details of the victim brought by and examined in presence of especially if you are a male examiner, it's always advised that you should examine in presence of another female attendant the next thing is taking a consent consent is very very important here the consent can be there in the question answer form where you can say that are you willing to uh, be examined by us or by me here if the victim is a minor then you have to take a consent from his parents or the guardian you have to explain about the full procedures that you're gonna take some samples you will even collect some photographs and you have to tell the person that the person have right to refuse but that such refusal may go against that person in court then you have to take the answer yes and no take the signature or the thumb impression of the person you have to mention the witness their their sign and their detail examined in presence of and you have to mention about the identification mark it's always better to provide two identification mark of the person identification marks could be like mole or some scar then is your history these are the questions which you can ask there is no sequence to ask these questions you can ask at any time and in any sequence you have to make sure that the person is comfortable enough to answer your question or whatever information you can take it's better always to uh, my, uh, to note it down in the document what you have to ask is whether at the time of the act whether the person whether the person was menstruating or not because if the person was menstruating during that time the semen may flow out uh, you have to ask about the lmp whether the person is pregnant or not or if there is any any other problem yeah you have to ask about the history of bath after the incident because a lot of minor evidence may wash away after taking a bath or whether she has changed the cloth or not because clothing will also provide a lot of information during the examination whether the person has passed urine stool or doused since the assault whether she has brushed teeth because in case of buccal coitus uh, spermatozoa can be found in buccal cavity up to 9 hours if she have not brushed or not eaten or drank anything you have to ask an history of std history of the incident if date time and place date and time is important because the interval between the incident and the examination may be different you have to find that interval you have to ask whether she was intoxicated with alcohol or any drug was given before the incident you have to ask whether there is any emission of semen means whether the person was wearing condom or not if if there is ejaculation of semen where was it inside or outside because according to that only then you can collect the semen don't forget to ask the history of penetration in anus because uh, in some uh, rape cases there was no vaginal penetration there was only anal penetration and a lot of doctor missed that as most of the time uh, the person may not reveal or say anything they would be already in psychological trauma crying so it's very difficult to get history in certain most of the time you have to ask about the pain or discomfort during walking if there was there any history of bleeding physical examination which is more important so you have to check the person's build appearance height weight i have to look at the dental formula because if she would have bitten the accused and accused come for some examination and, and if you find out some bite marks then you can correlate with the you have to look at the secondary sexual character this is to just to cross check with the age whether uh, the age is whatever age she is telling is she is of appropriate age you have to look at the her vitals mental status you have to look at the gait because if there would be any pain gait would be changed you may look at the fingernails if she would have scratched or try to uh, struggle with the accused then she may have some findings in her nails you have to look for any bite mark on her body uh, which could be there in there by the lips cheek or breast or anywhere in the body then you have to examine the clothing in the clothing you have to make sure to request the victim to undress herself you have to look at any uh, sign any description or any sign of tears hair or any foreign material blood stain or seminal discharge 
if uh, mud or grass any evidence whichever is visible in the cloth you have to look at that you have to look at any loss of button or hooks because in case of struggle that would be but button and hooks may fall out and all the clothing need to be preserved for examination you can look for seminal stain on clothing and also on body by using ultraviolet light then next is the uh, examination of injury or scars on the body what you have to do is you have to look for any uh, injuries or scratch marks or any bite marks on a body you have to type up uh, you have to write about the details about the injury you can also click the photograph for evidence you can also look for petty k on face or on conjunctiva because in case of partial asphyxia local examination so first would be always inspection and then you have to collect the samples i have dealt with the samples in the separate slide but in practical what is done is you do the inspection you simultaneously take the sample and then you can do your digital uh, examination so first on inspection you have to look at the pubic hair whether uh is there any loose pubic hair whether they are matted or not if they are matted then you take you take the sample by cutting the pubic hair uh just to find out the loose hair or any foreign body you have to comb the pubic hair you have to look at the vulva vulva whether it is any in uh, signs of inflammation you have to look at the vaginal canal whether it is filled with blood or uh, any semen if semen is present you have to take the sample you have to look at the hymen if, in case if the victim was a uh, vir virgin then there would be a recent tear around 5 to 7 o'clock position hymen is examined using glaster keen rod of diameter of 6 mm generally the hymen will heal within one week but they won't unite you have to look you have to examine the forehead or the posterior commissure for any injuries or any signs of sexual sexually transmitted disease you have to look for any stains or any foreign body nearby the perineum then you can do your digital vaginal examination just remember that uh, earlier there used to be two finger test where like if two fingers could be passed through vagina easily it, the test used to be said positive but these days uh, the two finger test is not done then if possible you can do a vaginal speculum examination to look at the structures in detail this local examination generally is done in lithotomy position and another thing is you have to examine the anal area also as i said if there was a anal penetration you have to look at look for evidence for that in vaginal speculum examination you can look for any presence of any semen or is there any bruising abrasion or laceration in the vagina you can avoid doing vaginal speculum examination in case the person is very minor or unmarried or if you if you see that hymen is not torn then don't try to do a vaginal speculum examination then you can examine the oral cavity for any signs of buccal coitus you have to do a systemic examination of cns cardio git and respiratory as i already told that the sample need to be collected uh, simultaneously while you are doing inspection or palpation but you can mention it separately blood need to be collected in two tubes you can take 2 ml of blood in plain bottle and 5 ml of blood in sodium fluoride and potassium oxalate these blood would be sent for serology and blood grouping and screening for drug if needed you can collect urine for toxicology and pregnancy test vaginal swabs and smears to be taken smears are very very important you need to make a smear of any seminal fluid or vaginal fluid whatever you see there you have to make a smear and you have to dry it as soon as possible otherwise sperm will disintegrate uh, these smears will be used for gram staining and also for to look for spermatozoa you know that microscopy is the most confirmatory test the stain used is christmas tree stain vaginal swabs need to be taken from anterior posterior and lateral fornices but the best is if you can take from cervical canal you can take vaginal aspirate from the posterior fornice also you have to take some perineal swabs and smear urethral swab if uh, if there is any discharge from there you have to collect the swab you have to collect some pubic hair you have to collect the nail clipping of both the hands all the fingers in white color paper 
and you need to keep them separately for each hand you have to collect the clothing for any stain any fiber any foreign material you have to put it as above mark sample have been labeled sealed and handed over then you have to give your opinion like from the examination, I am of the opinion that there are signs or no signs of recent vaginal penetration that you have to look at if I'm an stone and there is external genital injuries or you can just say there are signs of recent sexual intercourse because if semen was found in there are signs of physical injuries or intoxication whatever, fi whatever findings you got or if there is any signs of uh, evidence of sexually transmitted disease then you need to mention that Sexually transmitted disease are, 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 are also very important here because uh, as you can know uh, like these days we can do typing and we can even find out the strains and if the strains match in the accused and also in the victim then most probably uh, you can uh, correlate with that. Uh, you can also say however the final opinion will be given based on the chemical or the laboratory analysis of the uh, samples whichever you have sent. You have to, you have to mention the date, sign, your name and you have to seal it and then send it to the investigating officer and another announcement that recently i have uh, updated the second edition for forensic medicine which is available in kindle format on amazon you can check it out i have also updated the second edition for the other subjects also the updates are about your new mcq points are available there are questions and answers because last time in the first editions answers were not given for uh, the questions but this time i have written uh, answers for the questions also and there are updates of of 2018 and for certain chapter notes are also provided in the kindle ebook those people who have bought the first edition they can easily update it by, uh, by going to the uh, amazon website click on the uh, to manage update and content and from there you can update to the second edition if you have already bought the first edition then thank you guys for watching this video for more videos you can subscribe to Ankit Sunyal Vets see you guys in the next video tata bye bye all the best